Hey everybody, Jonathan here with another children's ministry online lesson. Very excited to be sharing this uh, lesson with you guys today. Hope you're all doing well at home and enjoying all of the beautiful sunshine that we are now so blessed with, guys. Summer is coming up soon. I don't know about you, but summer is my favorite season of them all. I'm all for good summer time, so I'm excited. You know, as far as I'm concerned, May is the start of summer. I'm sorry, it just is to me. When May hits on the calendar, I'm like ready to go to the beach. I'm ready to have a good time. I'm ready for vacation Bible school. I'm ready for the summer, everybody. But before we all get in our swimsuits and go swimming down at the beach and have a great time this summer, I got a great lesson to share with you all. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be fantastic. But uh, a new age has dawned. Yes, a new age has dawned in the series we've been going through here on, our, uh, on Sunday mornings. A new age has dawned. After thousands and thousands of years of prophecies about a Messiah who would come and save humanity, guess what? The Messiah arrives. Jesus shows up on the scene. He comes around, he lives, he dies, he goes, and he kicks sin and death in the booty. Jesus is victorious. And then he goes back to heaven. And then it's like, well, well now what? You know, Jesus came as that perfect sacrifice. He lived as that perfect sacrifice. He fulfilled all the Old Testament prophecies. And then you gotta imagine, it's like, okay, that big thing that everything built up to happened, well, well, what do we do now? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Because if you remember, last week, we talked about how Jesus gathered all 11 of his disciples together and gave them a very important mission. He told them to go out into the world and make disciples of all men and women. Now, Jesus didn't mean just Jerusalem. He didn't mean just Israel. No, Jesus said the whole wide world. He gave the disciples the next part of their mission. And it made sense because, look, Jesus came and he did everything he said he was going to do. He did wonderful things and he made a way for freedom from sin and death. However, nobody knew about it. People had to know about it. That's why Jesus came back and for 40 days showed up to a bunch of people. And that's why he told his disciples to then go out into the world. You know, how was the guy who lives all the way in Alaska back then, how are they going to know about what Jesus did? So, Jesus told his disciples to tell as many people across the whole world as they possibly could about what he did. That way, people could receive the gift that Jesus gave. You know, we talk about how on the news right now, everybody's talking about the COVID-19 vaccine, the COVID vaccine's out, da, 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 and do, 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 and you can take this vaccine if you'd like to take this vaccine. Well, if these scientist guys who made this vaccine, or if they made, say they discovered the cure to cancer or anything like that, if they found this amazing cure, this really helpful thing for us, and if they just put it in a box and hid it under their bed, would anybody benefit from it? No, nobody would benefit from it. That's why these scientist guys and these doctors get on the news and they say, hey, we have the brand new vaccine and, and you can get it here if you'd like and, and here's what it will do and it can help you like this and that and da 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 And you know, if they, if they made the cure for cancer or something, I'd hope that they get on the news and share it with us instead of just hiding it under their bed in a box or something like that. So that's exactly what the disciples are doing here. Jesus came and he gave the cure like the spiritual vaccine for sin and death. He provided it for all of us. However, people had to then receive that cure. So that's why Jesus told the disciples to tell others about it, so they could know what Jesus did, so they could take part in what Jesus did, and so they could know Jesus. After Jesus gave his disciples this command that we call the Great Commission to go out into the world and make disciples, he goes back up into heaven and then he hands over the reins of the operation to the disciples. And pretty soon, the disciples would find out that even though Jesus went up into heaven, that God was still very close to them in some very cool and unique ways. And we're gonna talk about it today, but before we do, let's pause and let's get ready to go to the Lord through prayer. Let's pray real quick. Dear God, thank you so much for my brothers and sisters at home. I pray that you keep them safe in these times, Lord, that you give them a wonderful summer, and right now you help us all learn more about you. Jesus, thank you for this opportunity. 
It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so back in the day, the church wasn't like it was today. You know, our church, we're blessed to have a, a pretty big church here at Cornerstone with lots of awesome people around. Well, guess what? The amount of believers back then was very, very small. And they were worried about getting arrested the same way Jesus did. So they had, they had to meet in super secret locations in Jerusalem. Well, one day, on a day called Pentecost, Pentecost, that's basically, that, that means 50 days. It was 50 days after Jesus was sent to death on the cross. On the day of Pentecost, the disciples... Also, by the way, the disciples are joined by a new disciple named Matthias. Matthias uh, was chosen by the disciples to become the new 12th guy in the group, you know, because Judas is gone. He betrayed Jesus. So Matthias joins the team. He knew Jesus personally. He was a good fit for the job. And so these new 12 disciples are here gathering on the day of Pentecost with a small group of believers. And pretty soon, the church was about to expand and grow like no one could have believed. So flip in your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts is the fifth book in the New Testament. It's right after the book of John and right before the book of Romans. And we're in the second chapter at Acts. We're starting in verse 1. Here's what it says. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they had heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. All right, pause right there. So it's like Sunday morning. They're there, they're praying, they're learning about Jesus, and then all of a sudden, this sound like a rushing wind from heaven fills the room they're in. Now, it probably was a small private room, and all of a sudden, this big, loud noise fills the entire room. And then they look up, and there are flaming tongues above them. Flaming tongues. That's really weird, okay? I don't know about you, but like, I'm used to tongues being inside of mouths and uh, not on fire. So if I see a bunch of tongues that are not connected to any mouth or any body and they're just floating in the air and they're on fire, I might be a little confused. But these flaming tongues descend down from the air and then they rest upon and enter every believer in the room. Now luckily this wasn't some weird fireball attack or anything like that, but this was an act of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon all the believers there on Pentecost and gave them a supernatural ability. That means an ability that we can't normally have. The Holy Spirit performed a miracle through these men and women and gave them the ability to speak other languages. Now, in Jerusalem, there are a bunch of Jewish people visiting who came from different parts of the world and people who spoke different languages. Now all of a sudden, they hear these Jerusalem natives speaking their languages. I mean, imagine you come from four countries over to this, to this one place, and then all of a sudden, somebody speaks your language. You know, imagine you're in the midst of Africa, where there's a million different tribal languages, but then somebody just starts speaking perfect English. That would probably get your attention. And you better believe that it gets the attention of the foreign Jewish people that are in Jerusalem on this day. They're like, whoa, how do all these random people all of a sudden can speak the same language as we speak? Let's, they, let's listen to them. Let's hear what they have to say. So Peter takes this opportunity to share with these guys and gals a really important message. He begins to tell them the message of the gospel walking through who Jesus is and why Jesus did what he did and fulfilling the great commission that Jesus gave to him and the other disciples. Now, we're going to jump ahead to verse 36 and we're going to see what happens when that message ends and what the result of it is. All right, Acts 2, verse 36. Here's what it says. This is Peter talking. He says, So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. 
Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brother, what should we do? Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed that Peter, those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. Okay, so all these people of different languages come and they listen to Peter talk. Peter tells them the gospel message and they're deeply moved by it. They say, Peter, what do we do now? What do we do with this gospel message you've given us? And Peter says, ask Jesus to forgive you your sins and seek a relationship with him. Be baptized and the Holy Spirit will come upon you as well. And it's a big moment. The people respond positively to this gospel message and they receive Jesus and they are baptized. And the Bible tells us that around 3,000 people are added to the church that day. It's an amazing gift and a very wonderful moment for the church as a whole. Even though Jesus had gone back to heaven, his work was far from done because he was acting through the men and women in his church. And as we continue to read the book of Acts, we're going to see the church grow in number and grow in how far it reaches. But first, let's look at again what happened in this story today. So the Holy Spirit comes and gives the believers the ability to speak in different languages. Why would, they, why would he do that? He did that, like we said, because the people who came from other countries took notice of that. They didn't expect it to happen. They could tell that there was something unique and something special. But it's also this. When Jesus went up into heaven, he was ready to make the gospel global. Now, this might be weird because today Christianity is the world's most popular and most accepted religion. However, back then, there were like, a couple hundred followers of Christ, maybe, if that much. It wasn't a global movement. It was just in Israel. But Jesus, when he gave that great commission to his disciples, he wanted the whole world to know about him. And there's like thousands of languages in the world. So doesn't it make sense that Jesus would supernaturally give these early believers the ability to speak in different languages? so that people who come from all over could understand the gospel. And it worked, because around 3,000 people were added to the church that day. How awesome is that? Now, today, you, know, you don't really see a bunch of people going around with flaming tongues above their heads. Now, anything is possible through the Holy Spirit. Jesus can do that. But there isn't as much a need for all these different languages to be sprouting up when we're in the middle of a church service because we have believers who speak all kinds of languages now. The gospel is global, and that's an awesome thing. Now, Jesus can still cause stuff like that to happen. We should never keep him limited in that. But we should understand that our focus should be to spread the gospel how we can. And we're lucky to have so many people in so many countries who are willing to spread the gospel. And even though the gospel has become global, that doesn't mean we should stop spreading it. As we're going to read the book of Acts, we're going to see how the church grew. And we're going to see the church grew because the people in the church spread God's word. I encourage you, brothers and sisters of mine at home, find opportunities to spread the gospel to those you're around. I think a great way of spreading the gospel is living your life in a way that Jesus would approve of. People will notice that and people will ask you about it, which will give you a great opportunity to share God's word with them. Always look for those opportunities, guys. I try to do the same in my life. And know that the same God who was there on the day of Pentecost, watching these amazing things happening, making sure these amazing things happened, He is within you right now. If you've called upon the name of Jesus and have a relationship with Him, God is guiding you like how He guided 
these guys and gals thousands of years ago. So be encouraged by that. Follow Jesus' guidance in your life. Spread the gospel where you can, wherever you are, whether it's the pool, the beach, getting some ice cream. Oh, my, my mind's on summer stuff again. I'm sorry, guys. I just really am excited for summer. I should probably stop before I get too carried away. So remember, guys, spread the gospel where you can. God always makes a way for his word to be heard. And that's an awesome thing. So pray, ask him to help you, love on others, and tune in next week when we have our next lesson. Let's pray real quick. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this encouraging message about how you, you reach out to everybody, how you've called everybody to know you, Lord. Now it's just a matter of telling people about it. I pray that you help us all see at least one person in our lives who could use the gospel, Lord, and move us to share the gospel with that person, Lord. And whether they like it or not, Lord, whether they, they approve of it or not, keep us encouraged to look for ways to spread your love. Thank you so much, God. We love you. It's your name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. Have an awesome week, and we will see you next time.